radio. They're coming. Fitzy and Whipper. Their focus is extremely short. How have I even got a job here? On Nova. Hello there, podcast listeners. It is Leno here from the team. Remember, you can get in touch with us here at the podcast. You can send a shout out. So you can add to stories that you hear on this podcast or just tell us something super interesting. And the best way to do that is on the Instagram page at Fitzy and Whipper. Hit us up with a DM there. In this episode today, coming up, we have Dr. Chris Brown chatting to you. Did you overcommit on the first date? In other words, did you go from date one to marriage in like 4.2 seconds? And also, Song to Song, Song Song is back. Fitzy and Whipper. Let's talk about this one, guys, because it's always exciting when you go on a date and you hope for the future with that person. Maybe this is the one. We've all been there. Well, you decide to meet, you might go for a drink or possibly a meal, and then you're looking across the table thinking, my God, maybe I'll spend the rest of my life with this beautiful human that's in front of me. I went there a lot of times, guys. As it turned out, it wasn't the best way forward, but then I finally met my beautiful wife, Lisa, and I thought there's something special here. Let's get busy living. Mm. That's what I said to her. You and I, let's get busy living. Kiss first and then get busy living. I mean, there was a fair bit of flirting going on beforehand, oh, wasn't outrageous. there? outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. Well, you had to you had to take care of a few things before you could actually get. I don't know what you're talking her, about. You? I, do, I do not know what you're talking about. We move on from Ryan's <laughs> personal thoughts on how we met. Um, this is an interesting story because there's one woman here by the name of Summer. She's 24, and Maddie, Maddie Griffin, he's of the similar age. They decide they met on Hinge, right? Is that the one where the girl approaches the guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she said, "I want to meet oh, you." No, no, it's a regular. Oh, that's Bumble, Bumble isn't it? it? Yeah. So Hinge is your regular one. They decided to meet up for a drink. Uh, it went really well. They had a great night together, and they realised they both had the same sense of adventure. Right. He then said, "Well, you know what? I'm going to Thailand in two days for a month. Do you want to come?" Too much. Way too much. She said, I'm in. What? They've been in Thailand together as a new couple since that first drink. That's pretty full on. I mean, I don't know you find out about someone, well, you find out everything about them once you live with them and you go mm. away from them for the first time. But what, two days after the first date, but you're going to Thailand together? Sometimes you just don't put emphasis on that stuff. Like I met Gary's parents after our first date. Did you? Yeah. That's we heavy went, going. No. Well, that's what I said too, but then he was like, oh, well, they're in town and we're all going to the Palisades for some lunch and a beer. Do you want to come or you don't want to come? Like, oh. it's not that big a deal. I was like, you're right, it's not that big a deal. That is, no, that's crazy. That's a huge deal. I mean, you're meeting the, you're meeting the parents after one date, Sarah. Yeah, pretty much. I suppose I'd been on yeah. two dates before I decided to go on a holiday with a girl, but she was living in London, so I said I could meet you over that way and we could spend a couple of weeks together. It smells and desperate. Not really. We had a lovely time. You went t- all the way to London for a second date? Third date, and it was a wow. great two weeks. Says like we were in each other's arms, and where did we're, you go? We were in love, man. We're just to Europe, and we had from a, Melbourne. So yeah. you went to Melbourne. To Europe. So you went to Melbourne I'd, to London for a for a third day, and then took her to Europe for just a quick holiday. And yeah, you're going to tell the, me you're not desperate. Well, I wasn't desperate. It's just we we continued to talk every night what on the phone. Go and bowling. Well, you she, know? Was, she, she left. Relationships she left, like for the UK, not long after that second date. It she got, said, you, you drove her overseas. We both were date. We were both talking every night. Yeah. And I said, "Hey, I got two weeks off. Do you want to do something?" And she said, "Yeah." She went free holiday. And Boom. she did not say free Come holiday. Money bags, take me out. And then the next thing you know, I find myself in London. And we're shopping. Single. We're shopping at the markets together, whispering sweet nothings, holding hands. How long did that relationship quite last? Quite a while. Quite what? significant. Four yeah. dates. And then pretty... how did you get rid of? You didn't find well, anyone didn't else get, after get, that, did you? Didn't get rid of her. Unfortunately, some things just naturally take their course, and we fell out of love due to distance, and that crushed both of us. We recovered, and we both keep jetting over for no, a hot no, date. No, 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 no. She was in Melbourne, and I moved to Sydney. <laughs> Couldn't afford the French Riviera anymore. So, so anyway, it's not about me this this story, but anyway, God, it's a big, distance it, drove us apart. It's a huge ask. I know when you really, really like someone, and it's like, yeah, okay, let's do this, let's yeah. take it to the next level. But to go away to Thailand two days yeah, later, I know, and especially Thailand because what you find, and especially when I went on this trip to Europe, right on the first night that we were there, I was lying in bed having got off the plane. I needed to do a poo. And I didn't know what to do in the hotel. Because we we're you? sharing Our bathrooms. 
<laughs> so I said, I'm just going to wander down to the lobby for some man time. Well, you don't do oh, that in the it, lobby. Is, no, no, is in the bathroom of the lobby, <laughs> says. Oh. Not next to the concierge's desk. Anyway, I'm I'd not have dumped Miles. you as well. Anyway, <laughs> when you go to Thailand, you might get a bit of sore belly type stuff. Yes. So you got to be really prepared to settle in with someone comfortably before it gets too graphic. These are the dangers of rushing into relationships. I'd love to hear from people who have overcommitted before. Or, or you know what, if uh, on a first date, when you yep. usually know, so because I do believe love at first sight. If you if you're in love with someone. I mean, how much have you accelerated that relationship and said, let's do this? One of, one of Dad's best mates went on the date. Three weeks later, they were getting married. Three weeks? Yeah. Three weeks later, they got married. Still together? Still together. That's oh. nice. What dreams are made of? Ocean, pool, hot tub, or all of the above? Make up for missed holidays with whatif.com. What if? It's Aussie for travel. We want to know if your first date has got carried away and led to something really great really quickly. Dylan in Belmore. Hello, buddy. How are you? Did you overcommit on the first date, did you? I uh, didn't overcommit, <laughs> um, but I certainly uh, did a lot uh, for my partner now. Yep. Um, Tell us the story, mate. Yeah, so my partner and I, um, we went to school together, but didn't really know much of, much of each other. Uh, nine years later, I was living in Melbourne. He was living in Sydney. Yeah. And we just got um, kind of quick chatting on social media. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks later, came up to Sydney for a holiday for a week. Yep. Went back to Melbourne. And a month later, I'm, I'm living in Sydney. Oh, gosh. How good is that? That, that All was right. really yeah. quick, Dylan. I mean, it was like you yeah. were waiting for her to come back to you. And you're still, still with her, Dylan? We're still together. We have a beautiful little boy now as well. Oh, yeah, deal. That's a great well done. Story, Congratulations, well done. Alicia in Blacktown. Did you overcommit on the first date, Alicia? Yeah, I think we both kind of did. Like, how far? Well, we actually first started chatting on Scout. Um, this is back home in New Zealand, and a couple of nights in, he said, "Do you want to meet up?" And I said, "Okay, sure." I said, "I'm working, and I'm. Um, you can come on my break time." It was like around one thirty in the morning, and. He came, we said hello to each other. The funny thing was, this was on April Fool's Day, and uh, we kind of met a week later, we kept meeting, and then we ended up opening up a joint bank account. A month later, we moved in together, wow. kept living together, and now, five years later, we're in Australia. Oh, okay, this, Alicia, I mean, that's a good story, isn't it? Mm. Jeez, how quickly was it with the joint bank account, Alicia? I... I think one of the biggest hurdles we found was um, in a relationship that finances are a major trouble. Yep. And I think we both didn't want that yep. issue to happen, so we just went right in for it. Wow, Alicia, well, good on you. There you so, go. So you drained his bank account. Yeah, well done, Alicia. Anna in Port Kimbler, did you overcommit on the first date? I did. I met my husband on holiday in Bali, and uh, after two dates, then I moved to England. Australia, and I've been here nine years, married with two kids. Oh, it's always, oh look at that. That's Bali. Bali's always the way to do it. A couple yep. of things, you're straight into it, Anna. There you are, partying in Cuda, and the next thing you know, you're married. <laughs> so you packed up everything after that one drunken night in, in Bali, Anna? Yep, headed home, then six months later, arrived, moved in, and never left. Oh, that's it. That's okay. good. Why can't that's I mean? There's way. movies in this, Tom. There's ten. I mean, movies you got to get on to this. Yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll do that after nine. I'll Thanks, write a movie Tom. script about it. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't spoken to this man in 2022, haven't we? And we love getting Brownie on the show. It's the magnificent Doctor Chris. Woo there he is. Oh. Uh, that um, can I just point out that hasn't been an accident that we haven't spoken. Um, oh, how rude! What a terrible, <laughs> terrible start to the chat. Um, <laughs> Brownie, actually, do you know what? It only feels like yesterday we were talking to you about animals that are affected with the bushfires, but yeah. now it, now you're mm -hmm. focusing. Uh, and you know what? We we talk about people, you know, houses being submerged in water, but you you do forget about a lot of the animals out there that have been affected by the floods now. Absolutely. I think because so many animals, you know, especially wildlife, live their life outdoors, I think we, we kind of mistakenly think, oh, they'll be fine. They, they're used mm. to a bit of rain. Well, this isn't a bit of rain. This is a, a natural disaster that mm. they're, they're having to, um, to handle. And, and they get waterlogged, they get sodden, they get, they get cold. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, our Aussie wildlife aren't used to conditions like this. They, they, they find it very hard to handle. And, and they do get swept away in floodwaters. They do... 
they do um, become cold. They do take shelter in our houses, in our backyards, mm-hmm. in our in our garages, and and you need to keep a look out, out for them and, and do what you can to to help them when they're um when they are stressed and and then you you know you get livestock and pets who 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 you know who really battle against um against the conditions. So it's a tough time for everyone and, and especially our um our pets as well. Brownie, we uh, we were taking note yesterday and celebrating the life of the wonderful Shane Warne and also sharing mm-hmm. a couple of great stories from the jungle. I I, I shared a story yesterday where I had to go and get my batteries changed uh, <laughs> when I was in there for the great forty eight hours and there was Warney in his little smoking tent which he had in his contract. <laughs> But, you know, there was also that great moment on the show as well where uh, he had in his contract for I'm a celebrity, celebrity Get Me Out of Here that he'd have nothing to do with spiders <laughs> until that last episode and someone managed to talk him into it. And, and it was, look, I, I think everyone that, that was around him on the show just was drawn into the, and, and there was an aura, there's an aura around Warney, but also it just so so incredibly likeable mm. and, and and that I think the spider, um, yeah, I, I don't know how he managed to get that across the line or how that actually happened, given his extreme phobia. But yeah. it was kind of the, the first time I think any of us had seen a very, very vulnerable yes. warning with the yeah. with the twinkle out of the eye for the mm. first time. Yeah. And, and and that vulnerability, it, it it really drew people in. It, it made people go, oh my god, he is. He is human, and, and he is he has the fragilities that yeah. that we all have, but he'd spent so much time in the jungle rallying around everyone else and, and entertaining everyone else that when his his moment of of fragility came, everyone yeah. rushed back in to, to help him, and and it was it was amazing it was like, to watch. Yeah, in, incredible, and and to see him him overcome that was was a you know a, a remarkable thing, and I, I think we um we all we all saw a different side to Shane then. He 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 knew. That with some of the stories he was saying oh my God. in the jungle, he knew that they, they couldn't go to where, could they, Brownie? Like, did you ever... And I know you and Julia every now and then, I, you used to go to the control centre and you could watch things live where there were moments where you were walking out of there going, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Was, it. it was the best ticket in town. Oh. You, you would... You would sit by your monitor, which gets the the live feed, and, and there'd be there'd be the odd story where you're like, guys, this one isn't for air. Yeah, he'd, he'd let the control room know that this one couldn't be broadcast. But what was funny, what was funny was when you're in that jungle and it's quite a small area too, and then you've got cameras in position capturing all the gold, but the cameras are in disguise, so you know they're amongst the tree and there's fake bush around it, so you can't recognise that there's a bloke over there. But warning had launched into a completely inappropriate story after saying to the control room you can't air this and you'd hear the cameraman giggling from behind a bush <laughs> up, yeah. some, up some scaffold capturing the moment and enjoying it himself oh and, and the, the south africans we we work with are huge huge shane warren fans and, and so you know they'd be they'd often sit in the camera hides which are about like conservatively about 48 degrees in inside the little box that they're they're hidden in and and you'd, you'd see them every single camera the 160 cameras would all turn around and focus in on where warney was you'd see, you'd see this little puff of, of cigarette smoke coming out the top of the, the camera yeah. hide as they lit up a cigarette almost in solidarity with warney but to just just have a front row seat to this incredible story of his life that would never probably go to air because it was just so full of color oh. and so full of names that that needed needed to be protected oh. But just one of the one of the great joys, one of the great storytellers, and and um, wow, what what a what a life! Yeah, you put, you, you put up a great uh, tribute on Instagram, uh, Brownie. We love that one. Um, let's talk about the Doghouse. The Doghouse Australia is the Fitzgeralds. This is our favourite television show. Yeah, it's a great show, isn't it? We get really emotional watching this, Brownie. There's a moment yeah. where. The connect that first connection and first impression that you have with a dog, you can mm. actually see people they get really emotional with this stuff. They they do, and, and I, I think it's it's so unexpected, and, and it's it's the great mystery as to as to how that that chemistry and how that connection is going to work yeah. when that dog first walks into that that meeting pen, and, and you know the the dog may not look exactly what they were thinking or or potentially even hoping it, it would look like, but. But when that connection makes is is struck and, and their eyes meet, it's yeah. you know it's it's very similar to when when Fitzy met DJ. She wasn't expecting <laughs> that, 
Um, she didn't deserve that. Um, it should, the attention span's not quite what it should be. Sure, yeah, sure. Yep. The, the coat's not necessarily quite as full as it should be. Yep. Um, I, I, but but she, but she 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 landed a good one. She and marked she, she marked her territory early. Oh, that's for God. sure. Right. Did she? Oh. Must have been a big night. <laughs> what a mess. This is a bit weird. We got straight into it. It was um, no, it is. It premieres tonight, seven thirty on Channel Ten. Please go check this out as a family. Get the kids involved with this as well because they'll absolutely adore it. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. It, it, it's me. I will. I mean, I had my own little doghouse experience a couple of months ago and went out there on, on a job to, to see a dog. And and and, uh, and while I was there, happened to uh, to, to meet a, a little a little friend who, who has become my um Yeah, you've got a dog. new dog. Buzzy, yeah. Do you want to, do you want to meet hey, Buzzy? Buzzy? Oh, where's Buzzy? Buzzy! Where's Buzzy get up? Ah, oh. remember when Brownie brought the puppies in for wrap-up of the week, oh Sarah? God, oh, yeah, that yeah. was amazing. You oh, love Buzzy. Oh. What sort of dog's that, Brownie? Um, well, I thought he was a border collie cross golden oh. retriever, yeah. um, but he's he's actually he's half Maremma, Maremma, quarter, quarter coolie, quarter kelpie. So. He is beautiful. Oh, great. Oh. Oh. You know what? You you yes. do this. Doesn't he Just, deliberately? Doesn't he do this? Strings. Oh, mate, he's it's, milking it again. It's unbelievable. It's a he's a vet and a dog owner. Like that's not a. Oh. He long said to me before we went to wear Sarah, oh. when I bring the dog out, <laughs> make sure you put this bit on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I know I mean, his game. How, can you, how can you look into those eyes and claim yeah. that this is nothing but but pure? Oh, you know? yeah. He's also he's also the worst behaved dog in in the entire um, suburbs of Sydney yeah. where I live. And, and in the dog park, nothing is a, is a better leveler than than being the local vet and having the worst behaved dog who is who is like one kilometre becoming sort of one and a half to two kilometres awesome. away from you if you're calling yeah. and he's sort of just generally creating... <laughs> trying running. to run away. Not the first hey, time you've um, had a loose unit living with you, Brownie. Hey, hey, before you go as well, congratulations, mate. Well done. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, yeah, Sarah, Sarah here we go. So, so, such appropriate words. Here we go. Here we go. Well, the, so, those pet oh, shots oh, of you at the airport doing drop-offs didn't do and, you any favours. Could have given her a kiss didn't goodbye, know, mate. No, yeah. Brooke was having twins. So that was that's great news, yeah. mate. It's is good that, to hear. Is that the story this week? Yeah, women's, <laughs> yeah I've just picked up the women's day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brown, <laughs> that's twins, breaking. Or is it triplets? Whatever it is. And I know Kate Ritchie's not happy with it as well, your ex-wife. So... <laughs> <laughs> This, oh, I mean, you could reel off a lot of our. Yeah, Buzzy's got something to say about that. Yeah. So, Buzzy um, wants out. Yeah, look, he, he's he's got all the secrets to spill. Um, you know, he's probably the most reliable source we we have here uh, yeah. on the situation. So, you know, I'm, I'm so, look, I'm surprised you haven't got all the different ex girlfriends on on the no, line, but it... wives even, mothers of my children. I I have I have had so many partners who have been pregnant um i don't know where these children go if we if we isolate that grab tommy yeah well, that's, thank you brownie that's this year of i'm a celebrity yeah. all the brownies kids in the jungle oh, oh, oh. he's doing warnings work for him oh uh, mate we love you brownie the doghouse australia season two premieres tonight 7 30 on channel 10 thanks for coming on the show legend oh, look it is always a true delight and a true pleasure you know bye, see you mate bye bye we're celebrating International Women's Day, so we've got a special version of this. Two people enter. Who is? Only one leaves. Lock the door! There's 60 seconds. What? On the clock. Time to dance. It's time to play. Last man standing. Don't miss the Sydney Derby 23. Giants v Swans, March 19 at a core stadium. Tickets at Ticket Tech. Yeah, that's right. How good is this? Tickets. A sweet, this is unreal. It's the Sydney Derby. GWS Giants are taking on the Sydney Swans. You and three mates, private suite, gourmet grazing menu, premium beverage package. Plus, we're going to throw in some GWS Giants scarves. It's a huge game too. Can Buddy Franklin kick his 1,000th yep. mm. goal? He only needs five more. There's going to be a lot of people there. If you want to go get tickets, you can get tickets at Ticket Tech. It's March 19 at a core stadium. But today... We just thought it's a special day, so we're going to do last woman standing today. It's International Women's Day. I love this. So we thought, who would be the two main women in our lives? Don't worry about the wives. Our mums fit head to head. We've got the beautiful Christine Whipley f first. Welcome, Christine. Hey, mum. Hi, team. Mum, as a kindergarten teacher, and over the years, you love a good drama on TV as well, but what would I be do. your specialty topic? What do you think you'd really excel in, besides white wine and chocolate? 
Oh, I'm not sure. That you've got you've caught me. Now. Geography's uh, not your thing, is it? Sex in the City, Christine. Did you huh? sit down with Michael and the girls and watch Probably, that? Probably yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, and stories yes. and stories from the running of the bulls. Besides that, <laughs> that's all she does. Uh, Christine, you are representing Marina in Manly Vale this morning. That is the listener that you are representing. And representing Joe from Preston's is my mum, Claire Fizzle. Welcome, Claire. Good morning. How are you guys? Mm. Pretty good, Claire. What are you doing for that's International it. Women's Day today, Mum? Is Dad looking after you, taking out for lunch, or what is he doing? No, I would just probably be sitting home um, doing some, doing a few jobs. Yeah, right. Okay. Is how is it? How, is his massage chair stuffed now, Mum? Has he worn that in too much? <laughs> no, <laughs> he's doing fine, thank you. Ryan. Okay, it's not right. his day, Fitz. Don't worry about him. him out of it. Okay, now the my, my mum's really nervous. I spoke to mum last night. She said, "What are some of the questions? Can you give me the heads up?" I said, <laughs> "You can't cheat, mum." So, so what I'm going to do, Christine, you're going to go first. Okay, now if you get one wrong, power goes over to my mum. Whoever has the power at the end of sixty seconds wins for their listener. Uh, a great private suite at the first game okay. of the AFL this year. All right, oh, here we pressure go. Pressure is on. All right, All right, who's going to get the box? Here Christine we go. Christine Whipfley, your 60 second starts now. now. Who sings the song Single Ladies? Absolutely no idea. Oh, it's uh, Beyonce. Over to Claire Fizzle. Claire, what is a group of lions called? Oh, a lair. No, it's a pride. Oh. Back to Christine. Oh, Chris- Christine, in 2019, Little Nas brought out a song called Old Town Road. What was it about? <laughs> An old town road? No, it was his horse. It was about his oh. horse. Let's go back to my mum. Claire, oh. Tracy Grimshaw hosts what TV show? Love Island? No! <laughs> <laughs> Christine, Christine, back to you. A Shih Tzu and a Shah Pei are types of what? Oh, so, uh, can you repeat that, please? A, a Shih Tzu and a Shah Pei are types of what? Hat. No, they're dogs. <laughs> Back to my mum. Claire, what is dogs. what they're is the dogs. smallest dogs. state in Australia, mum? The smallest state? Yes. Tasmania. Oh, well. That, that, I mean, was, that, that was, was a disaster. That was an absolute, absolute disaster. I mean, Claire, Claire breakfast. You, you've won it, Claire, and you yelled out Hang Tasmania on. after the buzzer. Uh. Um, and when was the last time you wore a Shih Tzu on your head, Mum? <laughs> I don't know. What I, no, it was the first one that got me, the first name. What was the first one? Uh, a Shih, Shih, Tzu Shih Tzu and a Sharpay. A Sharpay. Oh. That's what got me. And yeah. can I go back to my Mum? <laughs> Tracy Grimshaw, Mum, she's been on air for like 30 years. Yeah, Car- I, I don't know. Those. The pride, well, I didn't say I all those. So, uh, I think Claire got the easy one. Oh, hang on. There's been a protest. Oh. There's been a protest. There wouldn't be any music ones. I would have got the Pride, Tracy right. Grimshaw and Tasmania. Okay. So, all right, so that means this morning, <laughs> Joe in Preston. Joe, the winner, Joe. Hello, Joe. Woo. Congratulations. Um, don't miss the Sydney Derby 23. Giants versus Swans, March 19th at a core stadium. Tickets at Ticketek. I think that, that went well. Thanks, ladies. Oh, that was a disaster. Great job, guys. Don't give me, don't give me music questions. All right. I'll never answer those. That's not how it works. <laughs> Let me sing that song. Song, 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 song. Song, 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 song. song. Something to lighten your mood as the rain continues to fall outside. 150 mil predicted for today over or over the next 24 hours. Absolute madness. Careful on the road, kids, as we get into song, 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 song. Tommy, we're streaming live on the Fitz and Whipper Facebook page. Yeah, everyone joining us there for their guesses. Uh, good morning to Dee in Werris Creek. Oh, hi, Dee. Yeah. Hope you're um, holding up all right there in Werris Creek. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Rach and Debbie all excited to get into it this morning. Good on you, Rach. Good on you, Deb. MDG, the leaderboard says, that Sarah McGilvray has extended her lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she jumped ahead, although it was a nice to see BJ uh, getting on the board as well with sending through a oh, answer to Riddle did. Time last Friday as well. Well done, BJ. Uh-huh. Huge fan of Riddle Time. She's going to go past me, so... Uh, no, <laughs> no one can go out on the first round, as we know, so let's kick into it, guys. Play along in the car. Put this word into a song. The word is one. One, one is the is, loneliest oh, number. One by you two. Ryan James. 
One Night in Heaven and People. Oh, Here we go. Oh Sarah's God. in. One Night in Heaven. One, one Night in don't Heaven. Don't sing it. Puts what? me off. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, if I said Britney Spears. One is the loneliest number. We've done MDG's that. Yeah. Okay. Come on. many songs that start with one? Hit me three, four. Oh, one more time. Julio, one, two, three, yeah. four. One more time. One more time. Yeah. Would have taken that. Yeah. A oh, blondie. Oh, yeah. All right, we uh, are all warmed up as we move into the first official round. The word you need to put into a song is don't. Don't, don't stop don't. believing. Don't, don't hit Sharon. Don't. Yep. Don't stop don't, the music. Don't you. Oh, Sarah. Oh, oh, yeah. Indeed, don't you very you quick. Yeah. Don't you. Monday. Don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't you forget about me. <laughs> yeah, all right, well done. Don't ask me in excess. Don't look back in anger, Oasis. Ooh. Oasis. We could have gone with. Mm. Don't give us any more examples. Oh, what about Don't Start Now? Oh, Great yeah. song. I love Dua Lipa. Yeah, well said. So much. Okay, the third round. Here we go. The word is give. Give me all you got. Give me your money. Hmm? Uh, spice You're not girls. robbing someone. Give. <laughs> give. give me everything tonight. Pitbull. Yep. Give. Well done, says. Can give. I do give me some kind of sign as in Give me some give kind me. of yeah. sign. Taken, yes. Uh, give me. Give me, give me some eleven. Oh, give me some yes. Love. MDG. Give me my... Give me my money back. Give me my, my money, money back. back. Yeah, OGB. Give me my money back. You, you be, you're talking the Ben Fold song? Yes. yes. Uh, one, give me one my angry, money back. One angry dwarf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, thank you. Oh, I love it. What is the name of the song? Good album. Ah, uh, yeah. To blame, you give love a bad name. Okay. Um, we <laughs> all Great. moved through. Greg Carnaludi on Facebook says, Give me your love, Christine. Which oh, That's my man. mother. You're talking about who? No, Carnaludi. Craig. Oh, Craig. Craig Carnaludi. Oh, sorry, what? Craig Carnaludi. Carnaludi. What's your tongue, Carnaludi? What? Not like. Okay, oh. the word is pretty. Pretty, pretty fly for a white girl. Oh, pretty pretty woman. woman. Pretty MDG. woman. Oh, no, oh, MDG. It's come on. Oh, pretty. MDG's been quick. Sarah. Am I not pretty enough? Uh, yeah. oh, I didn't give him anything. I can't do the yeah, So Pretty by TLC? Yes. Is that right? Yes. No. Yes. Oh, isn't it unpretty? Unpretty. Oh, oh it yeah. doesn't matter. But, yeah, same thing. Unpretty. Yeah. It's still got pretty in Is yeah. unpretty a word? Either. Oh, you'd have to ask TLC. No, because <laughs> I'm after yeah, pretty. Is he shooping or something? Unpretty. Uh, which, oh, come uh, on. I mean, if you can get gimme from no, give, I'm you can give. No, Tom, you're in. I'm happy. You're through, Tom. Congratulations. The next round. <laughs> the word is save or save. Save so tonight. Fight the break of dawn. Oh, save. Save. oh save every... No. Save, me. save the last save dance me. for me. How does it go? Oh. Won't you please save, save the, the last dance for, for me. Who's that? Boobies. It's very old. I want to say. Oh. Okay, yep. Save. Sarah, where are you? Save the uh, night. Uh, fight oh, yes. the day oh, morning. Yes. Oh, tomorrow. That's yeah. literally the song that I... Oh, oh, is that yours? Yeah, that's oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. You can have it, Sarah. We have lost two people. We have lost two people here. MDG and Thomas Brian Ivey. So we say goodbye to Sarah and Ryan James. MDG has never been hotter. I know. It's really, never been hotter. Sometimes it lands in your lap. Smash him, Tom. smell a sheet just quietly. Smash him, Tom. Sarah, you're sitting next to the sheet. Mm-hmm. Here we go. The word is Hard. Hard day's night, been working. Yeah, like a dog, oh. the Beatles. Uh, bigger, faster, harder, stronger. stronger yeah. Yes. Oh, hard is not hard, though, is it? Hard, not, not. I'm working hard for the money. Working oh. hard working for hard the money. Living. You could have done Barnsley as well. You could have done a summer, though, you chose, Tom. I always will. You always do. MDG, Thomas oh, Brian oh, Ivey, we move oh, through. Everybody. The word is. Addicted. I'm addicted. Addicted to you. Okay. I'm addicted to bass. Oh, yeah. oh Thomas <laughs> Brian Ivy. Well played, both of you. I Good thought word. we would have had a winner there. Here we go. The word is sleep. Uh, sleep tonight. Sleep uh, in the sleep jungle. The mighty the jungle. jungle yeah, the mind yeah, sleeps yeah. tonight. Who was that? <laughs> well, that was me. That's the that's a wimble way. MDG, wimble yeah, way. MDG, was that you? Oh, all I know is I sleep when I'm dead. I sleep when I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> well done. How does that go again? Till I'm six feet under, baby. I don't know. Okay. I'm alive and sleep. Okay, here we go. The word is telephone. 
Oh, telephone Lady Gaga. Yes. Yeah. Don't tell me. Oh, He's in wow. oh, don't tell me. Shame. He's been so strong. It's been a good strong. day. We've had a good run. <laughs> He's been so strong. <laughs> what He's thrown the there. sheet. He's packed it up. Thomas yeah. Bryan over here. Oh. Hey. Well yeah, done, buddy. You've hung out yeah. and nailed it. MDG, thanks for playing. Don't Markdown Tom. This is a great story here for you guys. And having a baby is one of the greatest days of your life. Not as good as your Bucks party, but almost as good. And, you know, that moment where you realise that you've brought new life into the world and you cry and your partner cries and you're there holding it and it's important. Skin on skin is crucial, says You'd know a lot mm. about that. Yeah, kangaroo Bet- touch. Is that what it's called? Yes. Between mother and child as or quick as possible. Or even father and child. Yes, Shirt off, get we, the baby on the chest. We put Huey straight into a pouch as well. It was a bum bag uh-huh. at the time, Same but touch. it was different. <laughs> or the different. kangaroo touch. No, that was, you don't do that. Um, but this is an interesting one because I was criticised at the time because when Lisa went in to have Ted for our first child, uh, I packed a bottle of scotch. I packed a bottle of whiskey and thought, well, Why? I mean, we're in for the night. God knows how long we're going to be here. She was getting induced the next morning, and I thought I'll have a couple of stiff ones. And I actually slept in the room with her. One stage I didn't realise she'd had a blanket because I took both of them. So she was getting cold. But, you know, I lent her a blanket and then I had a couple of drinks just before we called it a night for the very last time between the two of us. Um, this bloke, uh, his wife has said, honey, you ready, go- ready to go to the hospital? I'm getting in- in- induced. She said, yeah, I've got my comfy pyjama set, my toothbrush, my toothpaste and my face cream. Right. He said, great, because I've got my entire gaming system. So he took his oh. Xbox, he took an extra two screens, and he took, like MDG, what you know, like the flight control game. Ah, uh, yes. He took, like, he took, like, the flying instruments into the hospital as well. Get it. When criticised, he said, well, what else am I going to do? Yeah, right. So yep. for 21 hours in the lead-up, waiting for things to kick in and the baby to come through... He's on Call of Duty. He's on Call of Duty, mate. Because we... Shoot him we, up. I mean, we just took an iPad and just watched back-to-back episodes of Arrested Development because you don't know. But if I had the thought, I might just bring the old Xbox along and plug it in. Wouldn't feel right, would it? I, I disagree. I mean, if you're sitting there and you're watching something on a, on a screen, if yeah. you've got the iPad there, the two of you are enjoying a show together. That's beautiful. Mm. You know, that's something to buy the time and maybe distract from the situation and what's about to happen. Do you know what is distracting? When your wife's having a child and, you, and your <laughs> husband has 20 cameras strapped to his head for a virtual reality experience. Yeah, that was really good. But that was in the moment. So we'd pass that kind of waiting time and I was just turning them on. They don't make too much noise. It's just a little bit. Beep, 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 beep. But there was 10 of them. Beep, 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 beep. And then they run, about, they run out of batteries really quickly. The doctor thought something had gone wrong with a heart monitor. I mean, if you watch it back, it's an amazing moment. You're right you, there. you can actually see the birth, but then you can go over and have a look in the corner of the room and see what's over in there. The well. You follow the child, which was Jack, as he wanders down to be weighed, the cutting of the court. You're in the room. You're back in the room. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, to the power of VR. How many Says, times I do... did you sit down and re-watch that video? Uh, once a week, Thursday, 8 p.m. Oh. <laughs> Think of me, guys. Thursday Says, I mean, I, I do regret showing you the. Um, you don't regret it. You asked me to come over. The Little placenta. No, you made me watch that video. It was very extraordinary, just seeing the different tubes within the placenta what? cord that actually help the blood flow, the in and the out. It was just, it's amazing to watch. Mm-hmm. Is it? We'll get that up online, guys. <laughs> Want to know what your partner bought as a distraction into the birthing suite? Carol, what happened to you? Hey, boys, how are you? Good, Carol. <laughs> So I I actually brought my laptop with me because I still had some work to do. And so I had the nurses all set up those, you know, the little food tables. So they had me all set up with one table to eat and one table with my computer so I could keep working. Carol, didn't you want to embrace the moment and just hold hands with your hubby and think about... <laughs> no. Um, you know, <laughs> Carol, no, I'll stop there. So Carol, you were still organising meetings, doing a couple of Zoom meetings, replying to emails... I was replying to emails. I designed shops, so I was still doing some design work, and um, oh. yeah, it was there was nothing really else for me to do whilst I was I was being induced. So I oh. was patiently waiting for the right time. And and when the child came out, did you call it Canva or? <laughs> <laughs> I could have, but no. <laughs> Good on you, Carol. Thanks for your call, Jimmy and Calston. Hello. Hello. What's the story, buddy? What did you get up to during the birth? Uh, first child, we had pains the night before, and we went to the hospital about 11 o'clock at night. We stayed the night. She got induced. Waited all night. In the morning, I'm like, you know what? 
I made a trading, I leave my trading post and I think about it in my coffee. Oh, I try, okay, trading <laughs> post. <laughs> Did you find anything? You have the paper? Yeah, yeah, love, oh, it. yeah. I love it. Did you find anything in there, Jim? Did you... Before eBay and... And the internet? Yes, yes, I do remember those days. Mm-hmm. You can still get some good stuff in the Trading Post, Jim. Did you buy anything from the Trading Post as your child was coming into the world? I don't think I did, but it was 20 years ago, but so... Yeah. Imagine that, like, she has the child, mm-hmm. and then they go down to the hospital car park, and Just Jim goes, hey, well, there's a brand new trailer I bought on the Trailing Post. <laughs> Okay, I want to tackle this one because a Navy SEAL has just done a podcast, right? Done a podcast, and this is the age-old question. I don't know what to do here. What's more important in your life, getting up early and tackling the day, seizing the day, and seize the morning, seize the day? Oh, yeah, win Wednesday, win the week. Or is it more important to get sleep? <sighs> See, this is the thing. because it's sleep. I get told, right, that you need to get minimum, what is it, seven and a half hours sleep a night? Yeah. Something like that. I don't get that. Now, we have to get up early for our jobs, right? But they're saying that, you know, there's nothing better to get up early and to tackle the day. Now, this guy, his name is Jocko Willink. Go, Jocko. Have a, have a look at that oh, he's unit, tough. Sarah. He's yeah. a unit. I mean, I dare say over the years he would have oh just gone God. through a lot of people. Right, so he's doing in, a podcast. As a soldier. Yeah, as a soldier. Sorry, yeah, so just as a soldier. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Just to, Not in Mexico. To, on. To, for defending his country and all that kind yep. of stuff. Yep, yep, yep. So, Jocko, um, now that he's finished, he's not a Navy SEAL anymore, this is his routine. The reason I wake up at 4.30 in the morning is because no one else is awake yet. So that gives me the opportunity to do things that I need to get done kind of selfishly for myself. And the big one in that category is working out. And it doesn't feel good at 4.30 when you get up, but by the time 7 o'clock rolls around and you've already worked out and you've already gotten some, some work done and you've got some time to say goodbye to your kids before they go to school, it's infinitely better. See, you know what? It is. When you think about it, it is. But it's just that tough part of getting up. I would love to speak to people right now, 13, 20, 4, 10, if you have already finished your workout. Yeah, you're completely mad. I drive past two gyms on the way to work and there were two people in particular running to the gym that I saw them arrive at the door as I drove past. I thought, okay, so you've got up. You haven't even driven to the gym. You've jogged to the gym. And then I go through past another one, which is at Anytime Fitness, and you can see people in there working out. And I'm thinking, why are you there now? It's a great discipline, mate. It's a great way. To, you, you, like he said, you get your workout done. You're done for the day. You feel refreshed. Look how many calls we're getting. You go to work and you're done. And this is the thing. Like a lot of people, I, I reckon if you asked a majority of people, they would say, I would rather sleep before I go to work. Mm. But for these people to get up early and discipline and go and do a workout before you do work, I reckon. As long great. as they balance it out. That's fine if you're going to bed at 8.30. Yeah. You know, you've got to work both ends of the day. Well, I mean, fitness I'm a life, guy over here. I'm a life coach. Rachel and Engine, have you already finished at the gym? Yeah, up and ready to get ready for work. So, at the gym. So what time do you get, what time does your alram go off, Rach? Alarm goes off at quarter past four. Good. Wow. Rach, Rach, how many days? Sure I get out of bed right then, maybe it's more towards 4.30, but it goes off. Yeah. How many days a week, Rach? Uh, I am for four to five. You're a weapon. Oh, mate, You're so, an uh, absolute weapon, Rach. Uh, are there days where you, you are just going, there is no way I can do this? Especially with the rain lately, absolutely. Yeah. Rach, can I ask a personal question? Is there a reason you do it or you have a target that you're looking to achieve? Is it weight loss, strength? Um, I don't know. I kind of was just do it for enjoyment, honestly. Yeah. and right. crazy nuts. What time do you go to sleep? I do go to sleep early, like 8.30, 9 o'clock. Rach, are you single? No, I'm in a relationship. And did they get angry at the alarm going off at quarter past four? No, he gets up with me. Oh, That's good heaven. amazing. So, it, 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 you know what? It's all, also about discipline in your life as Absolutely. well. I mean, if you can have the discipline yeah. to do it. you got to, like making your bed in the morning. Because you know what? I am getting at the moment, especially 2022, we've, spoke, we've spoken about this quite a bit. Motivation has been really tough. Mm. I mean, we do have to get mm. up at this time for work. Yeah. But I, when, when we worked, when we were doing the drive show, I loved nothing more. Than then, sleeping until midday. No, no, no. I love nothing more than um, getting up early, getting everything yep. done still, and getting it out of the way. And then once you finish work, you're done for the day. But when you talk to people like Rachel and other people out there, and we have full phone lines right now, 
you start to feel guilty if yeah. you're not doing it. Like, you'd look at the routine of Mark Wahlberg. I mean, he's famous for getting up at sort of 2 o'clock in the morning or yeah, that's something. That's crazy. You know, seven days a week, goes to bed or he has dinner at 5 o'clock, he's in bed by 8 o'clock, and that's his routine. Some people are screw loose, though, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, completely. Like, they, they like Mental. To, they like to push their body to mm-hmm. extremes. Yep, and me knows he's doing seven interviews the following day and he can tell everybody. David in Blacksman, what time are you getting up for your workout? Uh, anywhere from uh, 10, 4 to 4 a.m. all depends on where, where I'm working today. Jeez, so, Dave. So, David, is this a discipline thing? This are you Do you need to do this now to get through the rest of your day? Oh, look, some days I do struggle when I don't get up because I, I do, I have all this, I just, yeah. If I get up early, it makes me feel better during the day. Right, Dave, you're doing cardio motor or you're shifting steel? Uh, no, nah, cardio, so I get up and get up for a nine, oh, eight, eight, nine K run. Good effort, Great mate. work, That's buddy. Amazing. Sarah on the Central Coast, what time are you getting up in the morning, Sarah? I get up at 10 to 4. 10 to 4 in the morning? Yes, uh, every morning. So so how much, how many hours sleep are you getting a night, Sarah? Um, I try to get to bed about 9 o'clock uh, at night. Okay. Um, depends where my granddaughters decide to go to bed yeah. as well. They live with me full time. Hey, S- Sarah, tell me more about your workout. Um, I do 10Ks on the bike, and then I just do a uh, double circuit most most mornings. Wow, yeah, DC. good effort. Yeah, okay. But also, I mean, if you can have this discipline in your life to get up early when you're very tired, I think you can, you've, you've got the motivation to do anything Absolutely. you want. Smash through your Monday. Johnny in Canada Bay, have you just finished at the gym? Yeah, I'm just about to head inside and have some breakfast, Ken. Yeah, yes. okay, so will the breakfast complement the workout, John? Yeah, yeah. Technically, it's uh, typically it's a high protein breakfast. Okay, so, sure, yeah, just sure. to sort of complement uh, a weights routine. Yeah, oh, weights routine. Okay, oh, so John. what sort of stuff, mate? Was it leg day or was it upper body or? No, chest and back today. Yeah, chest and back. Oh, sorry, well done, Johnny. Yeah, what time are you going to bed, John? I'm up at uh, sorry, I'm up at four a.m. I get to bed at about eight thirty, so I get that seven and a half hours in. Oh, yeah, that's so good. Good. John, you missed the half hour, last half hour of Married at First Sight. <laughs> Uh, you did me a favour. So, John, are you the type of guy that, you know, you're pretty strict during the week and on the weekends you really let yourself go and, you know, get out no. there and let everybody celebrate your body? No, normally six days a week I'm up at 4am. I, I have to sleep in on Sunday because normally Saturday night is a late night. Yeah, oh, out with the boys, on, Johnny. Yeah. Out with the boys on a no, Saturday night? No, watching a movie with the kids. Oh, oh well, that's beautiful. Sweet. He's not like that, mate. Lights. Camera. Hilarity. Kate McKinnon as Carol Baskin in Stan's brand new exclusive series, Joe vs. Carol, now streaming only on Stan. All right, the top three trending stories for today. So over the weekend, we found out that Meghan Markle's older half-sister, Samantha Markle, is suing Meghan oh my God. for false and malicious lies and propagating a false narrative and fairy tale life story. The thing is, the ridiculousness of this has come to light because this morning, the documents that she submitted to the court have come out. And um, she is claiming that 50 million people in 17 countries who watched the Oprah Winfrey interview with Meghan Markle and her husband, Prince Harry of England, and that's how she's referred to him. So okay. it's going to be hard for the court to Whoops. take that seriously um, when they don't quite know what wrong his name title. title is. Can, I, can you know what the sad thing is there, Sarah? There would be a publication that would be paying for her legal... I would think she's being encouraged, yes. So, th- so this is the thing. that They would say, because we're going to get headlines out of this... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll pay for your the legal side of things. Definitely. And you've got to try to push this for as far as you can. It's kind of, I, I think it's kind of sad because obviously Samantha Markle, I mean, not making a judgment on what her mental state is, but she seems to be pushed very easily into this stuff. So whether or not they're praying And I, I don't believe anything she says. I believe Thomas Markle from Big Brother, but I do not believe her. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, yeah. Imagine how much Megan's wishing she had oh. a different family right now. I guess Sean Penn's got choked up speaking about his face-to-face with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. And this is amazing because he is back in the US now. He was over in the Ukraine. We saw him quite literally on the front line in press conferences. Oh, yeah. All of that. He was filming for a documentary. He sat down with the president and have a listen. He gets quite emotional talking about him. I don't know if he knew that he was born for this, but it was clear I was in the presence of something. And again, I think reflected of so many Ukrainians that was new to the modern world in terms of courage and dignity and love that that comes out of the man and the the way he has unified that country i was endlessly impressed and moved by him and terrified 
for him and for Ukraine. Wow, because wow. I mean, I, I think everybody is taken by his backstory, Sarah. Mm. When you think about a man who was dancing with the stars, he was the voice of Paddington Bear. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden he becomes the, the leader of this country that's under attack. And not only that, leads the army into battle. Absolutely. But then as well, we had that caller on, or were you guys, sorry, were speaking to someone over in the Ukraine who was saying, don't give money to the Ukrainian government, give it to the charities and things like that because there's so much corruption. But then they're also passionate behind their president. It's it's just, yeah, it's a really interesting dynamic when you look at the politics in that part I'd of the world. I'd love to see that, Doco. Mm, absolutely. Well, no word on when all of that stuff's coming out, but no doubt there'll be a lot in mm. it from Sean Penn. And finally, Camilla Cabello, she's opened up about her breakup with Sean Mendes. This is the first time she's talked about it at all, and she was speaking with Zane Lowe. You know, I, I love Sean, and I feel like there is literally nothing but love for him. And this song is mostly just about, like, okay, how do I make a song that shows the cycles of love and life? And I'm finally at a place where I feel like I've had experiences, I'm doing the therapy, I've put in a lot of work, and I'm, like, really at a place where I'm like, okay. Is that the song with Ed Sheeran? Yeah, yep. She's saying that because she wrote it. Then she said Ed had a tiny window of time one yeah. morning, so he came over. They rewrote a bit, all contributed a bit more, recorded it, and like it was like, okay, gotta Love go. I'm that. done. So yeah, she's like, wow, we're done. Which we're oh. playing. It's a great we song. We are. Bam, we bam. Like them as a couple. Bam, bam. Bam. Bayo and Sean Mendes. I did too. I didn't like. I actually didn't like to hear that she'd moved on. <laughs> I yeah, didn't they want were her so to into that. each other, weren't they? I know. Lots of tonguing. Tommy, you're the only one that's seen The Batman. Oh, guys. Actually, there was a great tweet by a com comedian saying, did my mum name this movie by just calling it The Batman? The, Batman. Yeah, the Facebook. Um, you will absolutely love it. Can I ask a question? How does it fit in with the series of other Batman movies? Great song. Well, it doesn't, does it? It's not. It's all about. It's all about him, I guess, starting as. Uh, it's him it's like starting a prequel. as Batman. Well, it's yeah. not supposed to fit chronologically it's not. with okay. the others. Though. No, they're it, all independent of each. Other. Right. And the, the thing with Batman and Spider-Man and all these, I mean, you, you've got all your villains there already, so you can just do a new movie on the Riddler, on Catwoman, yeah. sure. on Joker. You can you can do the Penguin. And this is based on the comic book series from I think the first two years of him when he became uh, right. the Batman. Because right. right, okay. I remember buying the first comic of uh -huh. Batman as a collector, but I don't know where I put it. So does that mean, <laughs> does that mean he changes his delivery and says, I'm the Batman? No, so, no, I'm not Batman. at all. Not at all. No, I'm he the doesn't Batman. do that at all. Hey, how's this? In Austin over in the States, the, the Batman at the cinema, Sarah, a bat flies into the cinema. Oh, imagine the chaos. As a I mean, prank. we know what it was like when a dog or a bird yeah. came into your classroom at school, yeah. but imagine a bat being in there as you're watching The Batman. Was it a joke? No. Gee, no, what are just the got in there. Maybe Batman's real. Hey, um, the he Batman. doesn't actually. I know you haven't seen one. He doesn't become a bat at any point. <laughs> he it's flies like, like a bat, Sarah. Can we get Maddie to Groot? Maddie to Groot, if you if you can hear me, get onto the mic because I've got something for you. There's something you can do. They've got the font from the movie, the yeah. Batman movie. Mm. You can type in anything that you want, and you can become a superhero yourself. Wow. So welcome everybody to the Traffic Pig. <laughs> <sighs> So Why did it up you? on the screen? Have a look now. at that. See, oh, it looks so amazing, doesn't it? That's creepy. So it's a picture of DeGroote with a pig nose. Yep. Okay. Can we go? Is whip, that it? Can we go Whipper next? I mean, Whipper, this is you with your font here. Okay. The, the snack. snack man. That actually fits quite well. Okay, that's me it? eating spaghetti. I mean, Tommy, this is an old one of you, but this was always mm. the overweight Russell Brand looking okay. producer. It's nice oh, in the Batman writing. Watch that movie. Yeah, I Sarah, would watch that. Sarah, well, what am I? International Women's Day. The oh. Queen of Bathurst. Oh, and there's... Is that Nick Jonas oh, on my toe? Oh, there's a guy toe? sucking a toe. Oh, yeah. Now, I would definitely watch that movie, <laughs> The Sarah. I'd make a bit of money off that, I reckon. Oh, my All God. The, the box office got isn't on called, Batman. Isn't it called OnlyFans? Yeah. That Ooh. is. We're going to have to put those up on the Fitzy and Wimper Instagram account. I would watch those movies. I'm lining up for those. It's time for Sarah the Aware. Where's Sarah? Sarah the Aware. You have one of my organs inside you. Oh, no. 
What was that from? I think we were talking about donating. Were if we? If you met someone who you donated to, would it be interesting? To I know yeah, that right. you had some, mm. yeah, about my a organ liver or a kidney yeah, or, or a heart. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Wow. Guys, Cara has emailed the show. She says, hi, Sarah. My mother-in-law wouldn't take down a wedding photo of my husband and his ex-wife that she had hanging in her house. I asked her why she still had it up when they split five years ago, but she said it just brings her happy memories. Frustrated and on impulse, I took the frame home with me only for her to call my husband looking for it. Should I confess that I took the photo or try and secretly put it back? Please help Cara. Just Drop. let it go, disappear, gone. What Cr- photo the abyss from a house after you've left it? Well, we've She's been guilty. robbed. Take it back and Smash apologize. a window. Crop it out. Crop, mm. crop him out. Have you still got anything from your first wedding, Sarah? Like, uh, any memories? No. I mean, I still have occasionally they'll pop up in my phone. Yes. Like a memory of their And of you'll their never day. get rid of those, will you? Because you want to uh, remember the day or do you want to well, forget the day? I, I, I don't really think about it. Yeah. But it's, yeah, they're moments in time. I don't sit and scroll through them and, and miss it. But it was a part of he my life. He has a jar of tears on the shelf. Oh, no, wow. I don't think so. He's, he's remarried to a really beautiful woman. Yeah, yeah he's, he's really he's happy got, now. I mean, he's drinking his salty tears. But, was there a moment where you thought about cropping out a few people, his no. family and him from the photo? No, but my mum and he still texted after we split. What? Like, yeah, right. happy birthdays and things. So she to was... Each other. She was absolutely... In, loved him to pieces. Where's the loyalty, mum? Well, That's this is disgusting. mum and I did have a huge blow-up over it when I said the same thing. But I get it. It just depends why the mum's got the picture hanging. A friend of ours, when you walk into the house... <laughs> And he's, you know, in his 70s. But he's got a photo of him in like a white jumper. His ex-wife is in a white jumper. Yeah. His current wife is in a white jumper. And he has his arms around both of them. What were they... Well, so who Did was who was he with yeah. at the time? The current wife. The current wife. Yeah. And so what, they just superimposed the ex No, 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 no. They were all there. Okay, okay now. They, yeah. Does, does the white jumper have anything to do with this riddle? It just or? adds it to... Like no, cult. it's not a riddle. It just adds to the beauty of how comfortable everybody is in the photo. But do you know what? If I were to see my ex and his wife, we, like, we were all like, let's go out for dinner, that sort of thing. Wouldn't like, wear the same totally jumper. We're fine. We wouldn't wear the same jumper. What, you'd do that now? Yeah, I'd love to. We're all in a very good place. We've all moved on. Everybody's happier yes, with yeah, the choices yeah, we made. Yeah, weird thing that your mum wants to come along for dinner as well. She would. Sarah, that's weird. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. Mm. What, table for four? Would Gary want to do that? So you would never go out to dinner with an ex-girlfriend? With not, Lisa not and their really. partner? That's no. your exes don't like you then. Oh! Um, would, what yeah, about no, if you... Would you go out for dinner with Cushy's ex? Sorry, Gary's ex. <laughs> oh, I mean, not only have you revealed his real name, would but his surname. Would you go out with Gary's ex and her partner? If he wanted to, but they don't keep in touch. Whereas Gary's met my ex. We were all at a party last year together, oh, and they that's met, intense. and everyone was, and I met his new wife. And you move on. You did, he, yeah. did he say says you deserved better than me, and that's what you've gone and found? No, because that would be a weird thing well, to say well, to what, someone. To say the truth. That was at a house party. It's harder for for us to see your exes. I mean, visiting hours, you only get an hour. Oh, that is. As How dare you? As they're rocking back. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, we just wanted to see if you wanted to catch up with Wiffer again. Oh, my gosh, you've done it. Sorry, you're going to have to leave. She's losing. Okay, to date mate. her. She's to not date her, code blue. A, she is not in an institute. Well, they're all in the one room, are they, mate? She's in the He did it to team. me too. I can't wait for a This Is Your Life on him. They just roll them out. <sighs> they're not doing a This Is Your Life on him. Fair point. Who's going to watch that? Oh, just the exes rocking back and forth, according to you. <laughs> hey, still to come this week, more chances to win your way into the private box at the Swans versus GWS Round 1 AFL. That's going to be big. Cody Simpson's coming in for wrap-up of the week. Really easy up against Whipper. Yeah, yeah, he's locked in. He said yeah, yeah, he's ready to go. Two young, yeah. hot, musically talented Aussies. And then Whipper. Ready that, to rap. That's like that's like Cristiano Ronaldo mm. doing a penalty shootout with a six year old kid. No, it it's is. not. It's like Cody Simpson versus Homer Simpson. No, know? it's not, mate. <laughs> Little do you know, yeah. the six year old kid is trained. <laughs> no. You got to do a do- you no. Get I'm a not doing that. I'm not. I've never watched. I've never, never watched the it. Simpsons. I don't like the Simpsons. I know OJ Simpson. That's yep. different altogether. He's in it. The Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.